Vancouver voters speak loud and clear. We're uh, extremely grateful to voters. What the passage of two levies will mean for your local schools. Plus, teachers are used to handing out grades, but they're being graded too. How the teacher assessment system has changed this year. And a special guest for elementary schoolers. Meet their furry new friend and see how the kids are helping animals in need. Vancouver voters say yes to public schools. Hello and welcome to In the Know, I'm Chad Young. In February, voters approved two levies that directly support Vancouver public schools. The first, for maintenance on operations, passed with nearly 65% of voters saying yes. It's a replacement levy for the expiring M&O. The second levy voters approved is for technology. It also had a wide margin of support, almost 62%. So now that voters have spoken, where will the money go? We take a closer look to find out. We're extremely grateful for that support. Voter approval of two levies for Vancouver Public Schools will put resources directly in the classroom. The maintenance and operations levy replaces the expiring M&O, which makes up about 19% of the district's budget. It helps pay for things like teaching and support positions, textbooks, special needs programs, sports, buses, and too many other things to name. It's critically important for uh, our budget and our operations of the district and uh, certainly our ability to prepare all of our students uh, for post-secondary success. Vancouver residents have approved m and levies to support schools going back about 50 years. Our community has stepped up time and time again for um, to support its schools and uh, it's just uh, incredibly important to us to have that local funding. Voters also approved something new this year, a levy to put cutting-edge technology into the classroom. While it says technology levy, it's really not about the devices and it's so much more about the adaptive skills that students will need for the 21st century. The six-year levy will pay for new computer labs, teacher training, digital textbooks, and the centerpiece of the plan, mobile devices for students and teachers. This is a, a dream that uh, has been in uh, this district for a number of years and we now are at the point where we have an excellent opportunity to make this happen. The district has been preparing for the rollout of new technology for the past few years. In small-scale pilot projects, it measured the success of various technologies to see which of them work best for kids. To see these environments that are small and to think about now we have the opportunity to provide them for um, all the students in our district. Now, on the verge of implementation, the district is raring to go. We believe that over the course of the six years uh, that we will be able to really enhance and provide these thriving environments for students and staff. One of the biggest components of the district's technology plan is the use of one-to-one -one devices. That means each student will have access to a mobile device at all times. Amanda Richter speaks with three teachers who are already seeing results with their teaching. Monica Huey, Chelsea Hayes, and Katie McMullen are all part of a group that has been piloting iPads at the middle school level for more than a year. Not surprisingly, they had concerns when they started. I was really worried about the management of iPads. I was worried about students breaking them or something going wrong. But they soon found that teaching with mobile devices can have a number of benefits. Definitely, my students are more engaged in instruction when we use the iPads, and so I'm not having to um, necessarily come up with things just to engage them. I don't know if we continue to have just paper and pencil if you would get that same level of intensity and, and hard work. They come to class, okay? Attendance goes up. They are just wonderful at following directions and will remind each other of the rules that we put into place before. Some teachers have also discovered that using the tablets makes their job easier. 
yeah, you can come up with a brilliant idea on the fly and not have to worry about making all those copies and saving it for later, and a lot of times the moment has passed. You can kind of prepare for the lesson, have an idea where you want to go, but really let the students take you where, where they want to go. Now these three teachers are part of the training that is already underway at Alki Middle School. All sixth graders at Alki will soon be receiving brand new iPads. Alki is the largest pilot yet, and one that will help shape the eventual rollout of one-to-one -one environments across the district. We are going to share some logistics stuff. While there's a lot to cover, there's also a lot of potential. It's kind of intimidating being part of the rollout group, but I, I think we've been giving, given a huge opportunity, and I'm excited to see what it'll, it'll, it'll do for all of our students. And those initial fears? I, I wouldn't want a, a fear of not knowing how to do something prevent me from introducing it to my class. For In the Know, I'm Amanda Richter. It's not just teachers who are incorporating technology into their everyday routine. In many buildings, teacher librarians are taking the lead. We Learn correspondent Mark Ray shows us how their roles are changing. For many adults, the school library experience lives in a dusty corner of their memory and may look a little like this. But with our lives and our schools becoming increasingly digital, teacher librarians have new opportunities to lead, teach, and support both students and teachers. In a sense, the mission of a teacher librarian is unchanged. You need information where the people you come to. And although the library is full of books, they're now one of many options for students. You know, if you think about yourself as an adult, we're rarely going and pulling a book off the shelf to look something up because all of the current information can be found in a database or it can be found through a search engine. Shauna Ferguson at Ogden Elementary is not just a school librarian, she's a teacher librarian teaching kids how to find and use information in books and online. Preparing students how to know how to navigate that and how to find reliable information and how to be safe while they're looking for that information is a whole new role that we've taken on, but it's, it really does go back to an essential library service that we've always provided. Learning to use technology is one of many lessons teacher librarians offer students. On this day, Shauna has a group of kindergartners who are getting their first lesson on how to click the mouse and use the keyboard. What they're doing seems fairly simple to most adults, but we have students at our school who've never interacted with a computer. Since students in poverty are less likely to have technology at home, they're more likely to be behind when it comes to 21st century skills. I've realized with some of my students, this is the one place where they're going to get that education and that knowledge and experience. Modern teacher librarians also serve as technology liaisons and coaches for teachers, exploring the latest techniques and devices and showing staff members how to use them. For teachers, it becomes something that they can simply take and quickly use with students and integrate into their classroom without having to spend hours figuring out how it works and how to get their hands on it. Vancouver Public Schools teacher librarians and school library programs have been recognized throughout the Pacific Northwest and the nation. And you can see them in action at your local school. Just pop into the library and you will see some amazing things happening with the teacher librarians in your very own school. But you won't see them going, shh. For In the Know, I'm Mark Ray. Thanks, Mark. To see more stories on how technology is improving education in local classrooms, check out our online archive. Just go to youtube.com slash vansdtv and look for the We Learn playlist near the bottom of the page. Second graders at Hazeldale Elementary School get some special visitors. We are from the Humane Society for Southwest Washington. The students in Denise Brinster's class got to see a shelter dog up close and learn more about caring for animals. In return, the students presented the Humane Society with care packages to assist animals in need. One student, Sarah, was excited to help a dog named Sailor. Um, it's a dog who um, had surgery and because he was on the streets and I got him this blanket because he could be cold and his fur could like got caught on thorns and stuff. This visit is part of a class project in Miss Brinster's class that revolves around the idea of volunteerism. After participating in a spare change drive for the Humane Society, the students and their parents decided to do more. So they put together about 50 care packages, decorated 24 colors, raised over $60, and created small thank you gifts for the Humane Society's human volunteers. 
Denise Brinster, whose class hosted the Humane Society, is one of four Vancouver Public School employees honored by the school board for outstanding work. You can see Denise there on the left. She's joined by Connie Bailey, an occupational therapy assistant who works at several schools, Andy Burhow, the video production teacher at Fort Vancouver High School, and Anita Garcia, a paraeducator at McLaughlin Middle School. All of these honorees were selected by a committee of their peers. Eleven teachers from the Vancouver Public Schools earn National Teaching Certification, one of the highest achievements in the field. You can see the names of the teachers on your screen. To earn certification, they had to pass a rigorous exam, submit a lengthy portfolio of work, and have their class filmed for review. They also have to demonstrate interaction with parents and students district-wide Vancouver Public Schools has 88 nationally board certified teachers. Teachers, like their students, are constantly being evaluated for performance. This year, the way they're graded has changed. Nick Vole shows us what's different and why that will help teachers and their students. In class, teachers constantly evaluate their students, testing to see what they've learned. The teachers themselves are also under the microscope, their performance scrutinized by administrators. The way it's traditionally been done is we've been scored basically you're satisfactory or unsatisfactory. There wasn't much within that satisfactory section uh, to tell you really how you were doing. So it was, it was yeah, you're good or, or no, you're not. Vancouver Public Schools is changing the old pass-fail system, adopting a four-tiered approach to be deployed over the next four years. What, what I like about it is those four tiers give give really specific feedback to, to me as a teacher. Ultimately it's about improving instruction uh, which in turn improves student learning. So. The new system is based on the University of Washington's five dimensions of teaching and learning. As opposed to a black and white system it allows for nuance and improvement. You don't have to, to focus on I want to be a better teacher, you can focus on I want to improve the use of purpose in my classroom, I want to improve student engagement in my classroom. Working with their principal and coworkers, teachers develop plans to improve their weak areas and are given the time to get it done. You have a whole year to show growth and to work on your areas that you need improvement. Teacher leaders like Darby Mead at iTech Prep and Lisa Reed at Discovery Middle School are helping their peers learn the new system. Each day I'm thinking about what can I do to better my teaching and definitely the kids are the ones that are benefiting. For In the Know, I'm Nick Vole. Changes are afoot at Lewis and Clark High School. Starting next fall, Lewis and Clark will attempt a whole new style of teaching and learning. Traditionally, Lewis and Clark has been the district's alternative school, attracting students who struggle with behavior or academics in traditional environments. In September, the school will move away from that role. It will become a blended learning school, a magnet program, in which teacher lectures will be fewer and farther in between. Students will help set their own learning paths. And for a student who's interested in, in having that, you know, a little bit more control, there won't be a traditional day. Um, and the schedules will change from week to week because at the end of each week, the teachers will look at, okay, where are students where they need to be. Using laptop computers, students will study online while teachers monitor their progress and help them catch up where they're behind. Lewis and Clark's current students will have a chance to stay or they can move to their neighborhood high school. You can learn much more about the changes at Lewis and Clark on the current episode of Snapshot, the official talk show of Vancouver Public Schools. It airs several times a day on Comcast Channel 28 and is also available on the district YouTube page, youtube.com slash vanSDTV. Columbia River High School turned 50 years old this year. Students, parents, and alumni take a look back at the past half century with an afternoon of music and fashion. More than 200 people crammed into the commons at Jefferson Middle School for a tea party and fashion show. On stage, students modeled clothing and pop music blasted from the different eras Columbia River has seen. I think it pulled a lot of the alumni in. They were excited to see their clothes. We were excited to see, um, it was just fun to see 50 years of high school fashion and how it had changed over the years. The students on stage overcame their nerves to put on a good show. At first I was nervous, but once we were on the stage, we were having a lot of fun. and I felt like it turned out a lot better than what a lot of us were expecting. <laughs> the event was a fundraiser for the senior class's drug and alcohol free graduation party. More than $6,000 were raised. Local businesses donated their services to help pull the event off. Thanks to the organizers of the show for providing us with photos and video. Students at Franklin Elementary School put on a show of their own to celebrate Chinese New Year. 
Franklin is home to a Mandarin immersion program, so the annual Chinese New Year celebration is a big deal. Parents and students pack the cafeteria to see the performance. Chinese immersion students start in kindergarten, where 90% of the instruction is in Mandarin. As the students age, more of their instruction is in English until they're at a 50-50 split. The program's goals include bilingualism, academic achievement, and cultural diversity. We're just about out of time, but before we go, I'm sorry to say that this will be my final episode of In the Know for a while. As you may know, I'm not just the host of the show, I'm also a teacher at Geyser Middle School, and I've been given an extraordinary opportunity. For the next year, I'll be teaching at Okinawa Amicus International in Okinawa, Japan. This opportunity to live and work abroad was simply too good to pass up. Although I'll miss Vancouver and working on this show, I'm excited to take on the challenge of teaching in Japan. I want to thank you for welcoming me into your home, and I urge you to continue to support your local schools. Until we meet again, I'm Chad Young. Vancouver Votos. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm off to an excellent start. This is my final show. Take two. Vancouver Vo. <laughs> One more time. Take three. Take four on that. Achievements. Vancouver. Once we get past this first part, it's all smooth sailing, right? Let's keep smiling. Thanks to an incredible gift from the Foundation for Vancouver Public Schools. <laughs> Golly gee. I'm not trying to be goofy here, fellas. Make me look good. <laughs> the main purpose of technology in the classroom is to serve as a tool for teachers to improve student learning. Yes. <laughs> You guys are really supportive. I appreciate that. That's awesome. Don't worry, Chad. You'll do better next time. <laughs> You'll do better next time. <laughs> the main purpose... <laughs> okay, I got it. I'm back. You guys are killing me. Ian, you're such a good cheerleader. Sweet. So we're uh, on Cam Josapio. Tell us who you think's... Oh, you're all right. You're all right. We'll, we'll get it. It's refreshing to me that um, other people make mistakes, too, because I, I make a lot of them. All right, I'm ready. In our In the Know Snipe... <laughs> you, know, you, you can read all. Oh, I... Uh, too. I mean, you have Snipe chat. <laughs> I, I just... I got to refocus here for a minute. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> Ian, you're killing me back there. Did I show you my new ring? It's the, uh, it's the Punisher ring. It actually leaves a perfect stamp of my name in Japanese. Wow. Bam. Custom made, one of a kind in the world. All right. Ah, shoot. <laughs> s -s 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 I even had a warm up before you got here. <laughs> okay. I'll concentrate. I'll focus. I know. Okay. Ah. Yeah. And make sure you're free, because it's free. Okay, awesome. Way to go, Turbo. <laughs> Sorry, let's take it from the last line in the video and then come out. So, You're the man. There you go. Uh, I don't like it. Uh, that's awesome. No, that wasn't you. That wasn't you. That was straight up talent. That's what they call that. Oh, all right. He also got. <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna miss you guys. This has been fun.